Hello and welcome to Philosophy Vibe, the channel where we discuss and debate different philosophical ideas. Today we're going to be looking into the works of Soren Kierkegaard and discussing the concept of the Knight of Faith. Interesting. So, Soren Kierkegaard was a 19th century philosopher, often seen as the father of existentialism. We have covered some of Kierkegaard's works around the three stages of life, which may be worth a watch. However, in Kierkegaard's third and final stage of life, he describes this as the religious, when we develop a personal relationship with God. The Knight of Faith is one who develops the highest form of faith in God. We shall now look closer into this concept. Fascinating. Now, we all understand what it means to have faith in God, to devote one's life to a higher being. However, in Kierkegaard's book, Fear and Trembling, where he was in fact working under the pseudonym Johann Silentio, the Knight of Faith is explained as someone who possesses the highest form of faith that one can have. The Knight of Faith is the epitome of the religious life. No matter the situation, the circumstance, the outcome, no matter what, the Knight of Faith will have complete and utter faith in God. Even when faced with logical contradictions, when one's faith is challenged by all reason and rationality, one will still fully devote themselves to this faith. Kierkegaard refers to this as the absurd. When all reason and logic cannot explain, the Knight of Faith will still hold on to this faith no matter what. I'm not sure I understand this fully. Okay, to make things clearer, Kierkegaard gives the example of a Knight of Infinite Resignation versus the Knight of Faith. In life, we are met with challenges. We are met with pain, with suffering, we want things we can't have, and we can have things we love taken from us, etc, etc. Now, when faced with such a challenge, the Knight of Infinite Resignation will be resigned to the fact of reality. They will accept that what they long for, they cannot have in this life. They will be resigned to this fact. They will be resigned to their reality. It may cause them pain and trauma, but they will accept it. The Knight of Faith will go through what the Knight of Infinite Resignation goes through. However, they will go one step further. They are resigned to the reality of their situation. However, they still believe what they want will be granted to them through the will of God. Even though it is impossible, even though they are resigned to the truth of the matter, they still have faith that in this life they will get what they long for. Their faith continues even in the face of impossibility. This Kierkegaard refers to as double movement. The Knight of Faith knows that they cannot achieve something. They give up on what they hold dear, yet at the same time, they embrace the absurd. They embrace the illogical. They rise up and they say, no matter the impossibility, no matter the irrationality, no matter the paradox, with faith in God, anything can happen and what I long for can still be mine. I see. To illustrate this further, Kierkegaard gives the example of the pauper falling in love with the princess. There is no way that in this lifetime the pauper will ever marry into the royal family, and so marrying the princess is a complete impossibility. Now, as a knight of infinite resignation, the pauper will give up on marrying the princess. He may still hold on to this love. It will cause him pain and depression. He may even believe that they can be together in another life. However, the pauper is resigned to the fact that they can never be together in this lifetime. However, as soon as the pauper takes the final step, the double movement, he rises up and says, I know I cannot marry the princess. I know it is a complete impossibility, yet I still have faith that I will marry the princess in this life. I believe nevertheless that I shall get her in virtue, that is, of the absurd, in virtue of the fact that with God all things are possible. Then the pauper becomes a knight of faith. The pauper has embraced the absurd. Kierkegaard refers to this as taking a leap of faith. Among all the impossibility and the paradox, the pauper still believes. This is a knight of faith. This is what it means to have complete faith in God.
Very interesting. Kierkegaard believed that the one person who has been the true personification of a knight of faith was Abraham, and this was made evident in the biblical story of the binding of Isaac. In this story, Abraham was instructed by God to sacrifice Isaac. God commanded Abraham to murder his son. Okay, but how does this make Abraham a knight of faith? Because Abraham was prepared to do this. Abraham was prepared to put his full faith in God and commit this sacrifice even in the face of all the paradoxes and absurdities. Abraham knew that murder was wrong, yet Abraham knew that murdering his son was also right because he had the faith. Abraham loved his son and wanted the best for him, yet he was going to murder him. It was absurd, illogical, it was pure faith. Abraham was prepared to murder his son, yet at the same time he believed that everything would be fine, that his son would carry on living and would be blessed. This is the double movement, being prepared to murder your son but still believing they will survive. This is embracing absurdity, this is being a knight of faith. Truly fascinating. So there we have the knight of faith, a complete faith in God. Even against all contradictions and reason, one carries on having the faith and believing that with faith in God, everything will be okay. Everything will be as it should. Quite inspiring actually. I do get glimpses from religious people practicing this knight of faith concept when they're going through difficult times. Even in the most troubling of times, they will say God works in mysterious ways. They will keep their faith intact. If anything, it helps them carry on. Yes, indeed. From a philosophical perspective, I actually find Kierkegaard's Knight of Faith difficult to argue against. I'm always ready to debate using logic and reason, but this particular theory specifically goes against logic and reason. It is actually the foundation of being a Knight of Faith. Double movement and absurdity is by their very nature illogical, and that is the point. No matter what logical arguments I can throw to discredit the Knights of Faith, it doesn't really damage the nature of the theory because it is an illogical theory. You are supposed to have faith in the unreasonable and contradictory. This seems difficult to argue against. Granted, I would never be convinced to be a Knight of Faith as I value logic over faith, but I cannot use logic to argue against a theory that values faith over logic. Interesting point. The only thing I would say, not from a philosophical point of view, but more from a societal point of view, is that the Knight of Faith concept can actually be quite dangerous. How so? If someone is willing to give up all reason and rationality for their faith, then what else are they prepared to do? Abraham was willing to kill his son. His faith allowed him to discard all morality and emotion and do what God commanded. Can this not be used to excuse any evil behaviour? What if someone truly believes that God wants them to commit acts of terrorism or murder or genocide? No matter how you argue on a moral level, on a logical level, on an emotional level, on a human level, it will not matter as they can simultaneously think that their evil acts will be fine as they have faith. I think this can open the door to religious extremism of the worst kind and can justify just about anything as long as you have faith. Good point. If you would like the script to this video and you would like to help support the channel, then please check out the Philosophy Vibe Existentialism ebook available on Amazon. This script is also included in the Philosophy Vibe paperback anthology, volume one, Philosophy of Religion, also on Amazon. The links are below. And finally, please take a look at our merch store on Spring, some great philosophy themed merch there that we are sure you would love. And thank you to everyone who has supported us so far. But that's all the time we have for now. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the vibe. And what does everybody else think? Are there any Knights of Faith out there? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and share. And for more philosophical debates, please subscribe to the channel. Take care and we look forward to seeing you all soon.